Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today. It's time to get into a little Mass Effect and the timing is right. As we have E3 coming up, who knows what's gonna happen, right? There are so many RPGs that we could potentially see from Fable to Starfield to Avowed and so on and so forth that a lot of the coverage is really gonna ramp up heading into E3. So right now it's a good time to focus on stuff like patches and mods for Mass Effect Legendary Edition. There's some really exciting stuff in here like cut content being restored as well as substantial changes to the Mass Effect Legendary Edition on a technical level that we talked about in our last patch update. So if you're new here, you like Bioware discussions, Bioware conversations, you want a little bit more Mass Effect in your life, this is the place to be. We got some more coming this week as once again, we ramp up for E3 and I'm happy to have you here. Now, let's get into that patch, as I'm sure a lot of you are curious, what's going down with Mass Effect Legendary Edition, or as some of us like to call it, meh. The official post comes from EA's website, where they say we've made the following fixes and improvements across all platforms in this update. General, English spoken language can now be selected separately from subtitle language. Resolve issues with unlocking some achievements slash trophies. This is something we saw in our first patch. This time it's Paramours or Kill Count Trackers. So this was trilogy-wide trophies, it seems. Corrected pre-rendered cutscenes that were darker than intended after the previous update. So, as I've said before in patches, sometimes you create an issue with your new patch. Wireless headsets slash devices no longer causing issues with the Xbox launcher. Improved PC performance across various hardware configurations, including Vermeer. Fixed an issue on PC where non-standard characters in the operating system's username would prevent the game from launching and remove the dependency on the AVX instruction set in the launcher. Also, other minor calibrations and fixes, including some instances of crashing. Probably the most significant one here, you're not gonna expect this, is the headset one. This was a very big issue for some people at launch when they played on their Xbox. It was such a specific thing that I'm not surprised a lot of reviews missed this big technical issue, but finally, it has indeed been fixed. I think the other more noteworthy one is PC performance. This was something we talked about in our first patch video on how there was not widespread issues. At first, the reviews came out mixed for Mass Effect Legendary Edition on PC, but over time, things progressively got better and seemingly the port wasn't so bad. There are also specific issues fixed in the first Mass Effect. That is the one I am most excited to talk about because some of these have impacted me in ways I get. It's one of those bugs, the stealth bugs, I like to call them. You had no idea they were impacting you your whole playthrough, and then you get to the end of the game, then you read some of the patch notes and go, oh my god, they got me. I had no idea and they got me. So for Mass Effect 1, it says fixed an issue that prevented players from reaching max level. Fixed an issue where tier seven Spectre Master Gear was inaccessible. Various collision improvements fixed an issue that would prevent the ability to interact with objects. Lowered audio volume on mass relay load screens. That's a big one. And improved eye animations for male characters in some screens. Another big one there. So with Mass Effect 1, we finished our playthrough live on stream. We're starting Mass Effect 2 very soon, sometime this week. I'm looking forward to that. But in Mass Effect 1, whenever I would hit the start screen and go into my squad menu, I would see people sometimes noting, oh, you're, you're kind of a low level for this area. I was level 26 by the end of the game, and I think I finished it around 27 or 28. But people were like, whoa, you're low level. I maxed out. I was in the 50s. And some people were like, I was in the low 20s. What's going on here? I did all the content. And what's happening is it's clear there's some type of XP bug, it seemed, or something preventing you from reaching that final level, which has now been fixed. I thought it was, I missed some content. For me, once the trophy popped saying, you've completed a majority of the content in the game, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm gonna continue on, race to the finish now. I feel like I've seen enough and I wanna get into the next Mass Effect game. So that's why it was all the more confusing when people were going, oh, you're a low level. I was thinking to myself, well, I'm on the legendary mode, which would change how scaling is tweaked and it's level cap overall. But when people were coming in with their different level reports, it was really confusing. So now that makes a little bit more sense. The Spectre gear was also a pretty important thing. So for those who aren't knee deep in Mass Effect 1, you start to get a lot of credits towards the end of the game. And if you go to the Citadel, there is a requisition store you can go in the CSEC area, which allows you to pretty much get the best gear in the game for you and your squad. It's one of the cooler parts of the game. And Going back to this game, I've just appreciated Mass Effect 1 more and more. Maybe we'll talk about that in a separate video at some point in time. But having that up be accessible, especially on Insanity, 
pretty much hits you right in the kneecaps. So it was good to see that this was something that was also amended. All right, let's go through the rest here. Mass Effect 2 toned down the intensity of fog on Ilium, fixed an issue where a character's eyes at the end of the Overlord DLC were unintentionally red, very specific there, and reduced the max credits that can be carried from Mass Effect to Mass Effect 2 down to 100k for more balanced early game progression. Credit carryover maximum now matches carryover from the original release, which I think overall this is a good change for balance sake. As for Mass Effect 3, as per usual, the changes here seem slimmer than ever. Resolved an issue where English dialogue no longer played during the Citadel DLC for German and Italian localizations, and fixed an issue where some key characters weren't appearing as intended during the Citadel DLC. So overall, really nothing crazy on that front. What I'm really excited to talk about in this video are the mods. I'm definitely going to make a modding video sometime within, I'd say, the next month on Mass Effect Legendary Edition, just spotlighting some of the insane things that are happening within this community because they're doing some great work. I think a lot of people always look to Bethesda Game Studios as the leading modding community, and for good reason, by the way. I still think a lot of people don't understand how lucky we are to have like visual assets that can be created and used to make new levels, new quests, and all of that stuff inside our brand new Bethesda Game Studios games. But the Bioware community, they deserve some love, all right, because they are actually restoring cut content like romance scenes that were previously removed from the game that now have audio. There's also stuff like new quests, new text adventures. It's actually really awesome. So let's start by reading a IGN article titled The Mass Effect Cut Content Being Restored for Legendary Edition by modders. As reported by Eurogamer, the community has already created a mod for the first Mass Effect that allows same-sex romance between male Shepard and Caden, as well as female Shepard and Ashley. This mod does not add any cut dialogue, though, and so is more of an additional feature rather than a restoration. But as reported by the gamer, recorded lines for these romances do exist, and the community is looking to restore them. They are hidden among the files of Mass Effect Legendary Edition's folders, as well as dialogue for same-sex romances in Mass Effect 2. These cover romances for Thane, Jack, Miranda, Jacob, and Tali, although the only available dialogue is for the first romance encounter for each character. Mods for the original version of Mass Effect 2 were able to restore this content to a degree, but was limited because adding audio was impossible. For Legendary Edition's version of the mods, we can be a lot more creative with how we implement new dialogue for these scenes since we can add new audio, modder, Ryan Automus, Ainsworth told the gamer. This is thanks to a new audio engine in Legendary Edition, which I noted in my review, the audio is vastly improved, especially in Mass Effect 1. That new audio engine means that Ainsworth and the community is able to add other cut content. Once again, talking to the gamer, Ainsworth revealed that the community is looking to restore something known as global quests to the first Mass Effect. These are reportedly sprawling galaxy-wide quests, and so far, three have been discovered. You can sort of see an example of what that's like, where since the visual assets are lacking, you have a mod here for Mass Effect 3 called the Spectre Expansion Mod, which serves more as a text-based adventure. What I think is really neat about this is, as someone who's lived through Skyrim, Skyrim modding, Skyrim Special Edition modding, is there was some strife amongst the community learning how to adapt to Special Edition mods, where some are exclusive to that game, versus vanilla Skyrim, and so there were some issues early on. What I like here is the new technology that's been implemented here by Bioware has enabled mods that were previously unthinkable, and I think that's absolutely phenomenal for those of you who are on PC, who want to see some stuff that was missing from the game. I, I always wondered why Bioware didn't restore this cut content. Maybe it wasn't as fleshed out as they would like it to be, but for me personally, on the outside looking in, I went, well, this seems like an obvious choice. Like, give us all the new stuff on top of the old stuff we remember. But I also understand why they wanted a more accurate representation of what the original trilogy was, where you could just hand someone the case with the games in it and go, this is what I played X amount of years ago. Here you go. Enjoy. And it was that original experience. So I do understand that. But I think this is really cool. Once again, it is going to spawn me into diving into the modding section for Mass Effect on PC and making a video about it at some point in time and really just tweaking with things, especially in Mass Effect 1. The Galaxy Quest sound amazing. A lot of people don't appreciate Mass Effect 1's infrastructure nearly enough, I think. Uh, while a lot of people admit it's a good game, Mass Effect 2 and 3 are also great games, and I love them dearly, but they are far more linear, so to say. And what I really have appreciated more and more with Mass Effect 1, especially with its new bell and whistles, is that we're seeing the exploration, the new planets, that sort of uncharted feel, the groundwork that's been laid out. And up until Andromeda, there was nothing quite like Mass Effect 1. So seeing more mods that add content to that game really lights my fire in particular.
Last thing here, kind of a small thing. I don't know if you think it's cool or not. I thought it was neat and Bioware's community manager sent it my way. So I figured, hey, let's go ahead and show it in this video because previously I did not hear about it. So you can actually import your face from the original trilogy and share your face code and then other players can take your character and play as them with their own set backstory. So this is a post over on EA's forums where they say, for the Legendary Edition launch, a small tool has been created to help you convert your old Mass Effect 2 and 3 face codes to Legendary Edition compatible codes. This link will bring you to Google Drive where you'll find a small program you can download and unzip. Be sure to check the please read file first, then you can run Mass Effect face codes.exe. We encourage you to verify the Electronic Arts digital signature before proceeding. This tool will then allow you to enter Mass Effect 2 or 3 face codes for use in Legendary Edition character creation. Feel free to share your converted face codes here. Show off your beautiful, handsome, or characterful shepherds for the world to see. No, in some cases, codes will not match 100% to your original shepherd due to changes in the content, and you may have to adjust some settings manually in the character creator, which we see one example here for the community with the face code, and they have a backstory and everything. So this enables the hardcore role players to take someone's face code, maybe that face code has a backstory to it, and play through as someone else's shepherd, so to say, through that set of lens. A lot of people love to do that in games and set these invisible parameters for themselves mentally to kind of check themselves when situations come up. Like, what would this very specific person do here and act within that line of thinking so it's pretty cool and i wanted to share it your way i'll have more information for that linked in the description down below but that's pretty much everything we've got for mass effect legendary edition in today's video from mods to a new patch to the face creator code thing regardless hope you all enjoyed let me know what you're thinking about all this in the comments down below and i'm looking forward to hearing from you other than that follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below and a big thank you to all the patrons and all the members who are supporting the hell out of the content here big thank you to all of you stay sexy stay active i love you all peace